Hello Medford community, I'm Brett Champion, the proud superintendent of schools here in the Medford School District. And welcome to Medford Anywhere Learning TV. We are so grateful to our partners who helped us bring Medford Anywhere Learning TV to life. And those include Southern Oregon PBS, KTVL, KDRV, and The Dove TV. Special shout out to Southern Oregon PBS for also producing these parts. In the Medford School District, we believe that all are learning, and learning is for all. And what better venue to share our learning than Medford Anywhere Learning TV. Welcome. How's it going there, guys? It is Teacher Connor here with Miss Britt, and we are from the Learning Loft Preschool at Kid Time Children's Museum. And Britt, um, where are we? We're in the ocean, Connor. Oh, oh, okay. What, 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 why are we in the ocean? Because today we get to learn all about the ocean and the creatures that live in the ocean. Oh, is this, is, does, does this have anything to do with the, the, the gift that you just gave me? Yeah, I sent you that package last week because I thought you would be really, really, really excited to see what's inside. It's something you really love, Teacher Connor. Oh, oh, it's lasagna. No, no, Connor, Connor. It's, it's something you really love that lives in the ocean. Mmm, a lobster. No, no, Connor, it's your favorite creature that lives in the ocean and it has eight Tentacles. Parachute. No, Connor, that is not what is in the box. Okay, Connor, it's your favorite creature that lives in the ocean that has eight tentacles and it's kind of squishy. Is it a computer? No, Connor, it's your favorite creature that lives in the ocean that has eight tentacles and it's really, really, really good at escaping out of things. I think I know this one. Is it an octopus? You should open the bo box and see. Here we go. It is indeed an octopus. You are adorable and I shall name you Humphrey. But there appears to be something else inside of this book. I sent box. you something else too. Check out what's inside the box, Connor. There is a book that happens to be about octopuses. I'm excited. I think I should read this book. You should totally read this book. I think our friends at home would love to hear this story today. Sounds like a great idea. Here we go. Scooch all this out of the way. All right, guys. I am super excited to read this book. It is called Octopuses 1 to 10 by Ellen Jackson and Robin Page. Here we go. Octopuses like to hide. One is safe and snug inside. Octopuses on patrol use two legs to take a stroll. Here's an octa oddity. Count each heart. There's one, two, three. Did you guys know that? That octopuses have three hearts? How many hearts do we have? One, that's right. Octopuses in disguise have four ways to fool your eyes. One, when threatened, they can squirt a cloud of black ink which confuses the predator, while the octopus jets away in the opposite direction. Sounds kind of gross. Uh, two, if they're discovered by a predator, they can change their colors and the texture of their skin to blend in with a rock. Some can even make themselves look like a crab, a seashell, or a flat fish. fish. The third thing that they can do is, an octopus can, can detach one of its arms. The arm wriggles off, sending the predator chasing after it. Ooh, I don't think we can do that. And four, the octopus can simply disappear in its den until the danger passes. I'd probably do that one. Short and happy, that's their lot. Five years is the most they got. 
Six strong arms can help them grab shrimp and lobster and fish and crab. Hmm. They can wander where they please, swimming through the seven seas. Celebrate and give a cheer on October 8th each year. That's National Octopus Day, one of my favorite holidays. Octopuses, they're so fine. You have one brain, they have nine. Pretty impressive, huh? Each of their tentacles can act independently. Pretty crazy. Here are 10 that you might meet, all with arms and none with feet. This one's the most popular and probably my favorite, the giant Pacific octopus. It gets to be huge. It gets to be bigger than me, bigger than Miss Britt, bigger than most people. This is the seven-armed octopus. Hmm, it's kind of cute looking. Here is the blanket octopus. It doesn't even look like it has tentacles. The common octopus here is pretty small. And the mimic octopus, this one's really interesting. It's called the mimic octopus because it can change what it looks like to mimic different animals. It can look like a jellyfish or a lionfish or a stingray. Very interesting. And this one's probably the cutest. This one's called the Dumbo octopus. It's very tiny, about the size of your hand. Very cute. The blue ringed octopus is up next. That's this one. Do you know what those bright colors try to tell other people? That it is poisonous. So you definitely don't want to go petting this octopus here. Next is the larger Pacific striped octopus here. And this one's about the size of your hand as well. The veined octopus is very, very smart. It can actually use coconut shells and defend itself. And once again, it's very tiny. And then comes the tiniest of all the octopuses. I don't know if you can see this one. This one is called the wolfy octopus. It is super tiny, about that big. Which one's your favorite? I like that one. My favorite has to be the giant Pacific octopus. Well, thank you, Miss Britt, for sending me that book. That was incredibly exciting. In fact, it was so exciting that I have actually written a song about octopuses. Would you guys like to hear it? Awesome. Let me get to it. This is a song about an octopus called Oliver the Octopus. Here we go. <laughs> He can write a book with one hand, mix and two with another. Catch a fish and do the dishes, phone up his brother. Make a list of all of his favorite places. And brush his beak, his favorite beak pace. All of this, all of this, with the most loving eyes. All of this, all of this, yeah, the same time. Oliver the octopus has eight arms to hold you with Brain the things, three hearts full of love Now I understand your trepidation But for your information, he's my favorite cephalopod He's color change coordinated No need for vertebrae, got tentacles that go on and on and on and on and on and on and on All of this, all of this With the most loving eyes All of this, all of this At the same time Oliver the octopus has Eight arms to hold you with Brain the things, three hearts full of love Chef would be impressed with Oliver's robust attempt at every single thing he's ever tried. Despite the fact he has no back or toes or nose or itch to scratch, he smiles in a way. 
I can't describe all of this, all of this, with the most loving eyes, all of this, all of this, at the same Full of love. Thanks, guys. I brought a game today that is perfect for detectives and for using your brain and for learning new things about underwater animals. Do you want to play? Absolutely. Does this happen to involve the brown bags that don't get wet underwater? Exactly. I found some in my closet this morning. So I have two brown paper bags for us. One says mammals, and one says not a mammal. And I have a whole bunch of creatures, and I was wondering if you could help me put the not a mammals in the not a mammal box, and put the mammals in the mammal bag. Do you know what a mammal is, Connor? Yep, that means that it has lots of hair. Mammals do have hair, and mammals also have live births, and mammals also, most of the time, have teeth. Oh, huh, did not know that. You learn something new every day. Okay, so what, if I'm understanding this correctly, we are going to sort different animals into the different categories, whether it be non-mammal or mammal. Do I have that right? Yes, and I'm gonna show you the animals and then we'll try and figure out which ones they go in. Sounds like a plan. Okay, so our first animal today is called a clownfish. Hmm. Where do you think it goes? Hmm. I think they're saying not a mammal. They're right. It's not a mammal. Let's try another one. I know what this is. Oh, is, 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 that, a, is that a crab? Yes, it's totally a crab. I love crabs. They crawl sideways and they have really cool pinchers. What do you think, Connor? Mammal or not a mammal? Hmm. I'm going to go with mammal? No, crabs are not a mammal. Crabs would go into our not a mammal box. Mm. Okay, what do you think, Connor? I've got a sea turtle. Sea turtles, okay. I'm gonna go with, let's see. I'm gonna go with not a mammal. You're right. Sea turtles are not a mammal. Do you wanna know a fun fact about sea turtles? Please. Sea turtles can hold their breath for up to five hours. Underwater? Underwater. That's a really long time to hold your breath. That's like watching the movie Frozen three times. Mm-hmm. Whew. I have your very favorite animal now, Connor. <gasps> That's an octopus. I know where that one goes. Do you guys know where that one goes? Uh, not a mammal. You're right. So far, all of our animals that live in the ocean have been not a mammal. Yeah. Maybe, maybe uh, there aren't any mammals that go in the ocean. I don't, I don't know. Huh. I have one last animal. Let's, tell you, let's see if our friends at home know anything about this animal. This is one of my favorite animals. It's a giant animal. It's a blue whale. And I know that blue whales are one of the biggest animals that have ever, 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 ever lived on our earth. They can weigh as much as 24 elephants. That's a whole lot of elephants. Um, Miss Britt, do you think? know where those go? I don't know. Do you guys know? What do you know about whales? Do they have babies or do they lay eggs? Huh. Because mammals have babies. Mm -hmm. They don't lay eggs. You're right! It's a mammal! It's our first one. We can put it into the mammal bag. Awesome. 
complete. We did that whole game. Game over. We are done. That was a lot of fun, Miss Britt. No, 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 Connor. I have another round we can do. It's kind of a bonus round. Bonus round, she says. Okay, Miss Britt, with your bonus round, what does the bonus round entail? Okay, so I have two more super waterproof bags for us today. And one of them says big, and one of them says little. Mm -hmm. And we can sort our animals if they're big, but what is big? Hmm. What about if we define big as bigger than Miss Britt? Bigger than me? I, th I think that we could do that. And little means that it's smaller than me. Mm -hmm. OK, OK, let's try. Let's see how well our friends at home can do with this one. OK, first step. Hmm. What do you guys think? Bigger than me or smaller than me? It is bigger than 24 elephants. I think this would be in the big bag. I have to agree. Go ahead, pop it in the big bag. You guys bag. agree? OK. You ready, Teacher Connor? Absolutely. Ooh. Is that that clownfish again? Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, I was thinking about it, and I remembered a fun fact about clownfish. Did you know that they are omnivores? What's an omnivore, Connor? An omnivore means that they eat both meat and plants. Humans are omnivores. We can choose to eat meat or plants. Oh, and if I remember right, because I've seen someone like this in a movie once, he was pretty tiny. I think he's going to go into our little bag. I agree. All right. This is a tricky one. I don't know. Hmm. What do you guys think? Do you guys think that a crab is bigger than Miss Britt? or smaller than Miss Britt? While you guys are thinking, I did remember something really amazing about crabs. Did you know that a group of crabs is called a cast? Like a family of crabs or friends that are crabs or a whole bunch of crabs in one space is called a cast. Did you know that, Connor? I had no idea. Hmm. What did you guys decide? Big or little? I think you're right. I totally think they belong in the little pile because I've never seen a crab that's bigger than me before. All right. Mm. The sea turtle. Hmm. What do you think? Now, I know that they can get pretty big, like that big, but I don't think that's bigger than Miss Britt. Hmm. I'm going to go with little. What do you guys think? Am I right? I think so too, Connor. I think they're kind of in the middle. They're kind of medium sized, but they're not bigger than me. So let's put them in our little pile. All right, I saved the best for last. Are you ready, guys? Oh, it's my favorite, the octopus. Now, did you guys know that octopuses can change their shape as well as their texture and their color? This is actually pretty funny because what they can do is in aquariums where they're held, they know how to escape. They're called escape artists in aquariums. They can fit into any size hole as long as it's smaller than, uh, bigger than their beak. So they can actually transform their shape to be a lot bigger than just that. So I would say that they are indeed big. What do you guys think? I think you're right. I think it's big. Wow, we sorted all the animals. Ooh, done. Did it. We get to read one of my very favorite books today. And it makes sense to read a book like this since I'm in the ocean. And this book is full of creatures that live in the ocean. It's called The Pout Pout Fish. And you might have read this book at home before. So if you know any of the parts, you can read them with me. Especially the blub, blub, blub. That's a really, really easy part that you can do with me. So help me out because I love when Pout Pout Fish goes, Blub, blub, blub. The Pout Pout Fish by Deborah Deason and the pictures are by Dan Hanna. Deep in the water where the fish hang out lives a glum gloomy swimmer with an ever present pout. Can you make a face like that? 
I'm a pout pout fish with a pout pout face. So I spread the dweary wearies all over the place. This is the part I need your help with. Blub, blub, blub. Along comes a clam with a wide winning grin and a pearl of advice for her pal to take in. Hey, Mr. Fish with your crosstown frown, don't you think it's time to turn it upside down? Says the fish to his friend. Nice thought, Mrs. Clam. I hear what you're saying, but it's just the way I am. I'm a pout pout fish with a pout pout face, so I spread the dweary wearies all over the place. Here we go. Blub, blub, blub. Along comes a jellyfish, he floats through the ocean, his tentacles all trailing in a gentle locomotion. Hey, Mr. Fish, with your daily scaly scowl, I wish you wouldn't greet us with a grimace and a growl. Says the fish to his friend, Mr. Jelly, I agree, I'd like to be more friendly, but it isn't up to me. I'm a pout pout fish with a pout pout face, so I spread the dweary wearies all over the place. Blub, blub, blub. Make that really big pout pout fish face again. <sighs> Along comes a squid, quite a slender, squitchy skite. She is squirmy, she is squelchy, she is simply impolite. Hey, Mr. Fish, you kaleidoscope a mope. How about a smile, a little joy, a little hope? Says the fish to his friend. Mrs. Squid, I would try, but I haven't any choice. Take a look, you'll see why. I'm a pout pout fish with a pout pout face, so I spread the dweary wearies all over the place. Blub, blub, blub. Along comes an octopus with eight great arms covered on the underside with tiny sucker charms. Hey, Mr. Fish, let me tell it to you straight. Your hokey bulky sulking is an unattractive trait says the fish to his friend. Mr. Eight, my chum, with a mouth like mine, I'm destined to be glum. I'm a pout pout fish with a pout pout face, so I spread the dweary wearies all over the place. Blub, blub, blub. Now along comes a fish in a silent silver shimmer. The gang has never seen before this bright and brilliant swimmer. She approaches Mr. Fish, but instead of saying, hey, she plants a kiss upon his pout and then she swims away. Mr. Fish is most astounded. Mr. Fish is just aghast. He is stone-faced like a statue and then he blinks and he speaks at last. My friends? said Mr. Fish. I should have known it all along. I thought that I was pouty, but it turns out I was wrong. I'm a kiss kiss fish with a kiss kiss face for spreading cheery cheeries all over the place. So I'll smooch, 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 smooch. Thanks, guys, for reading that with me today. It's one of my very favorites, and I hope you liked it at home, too. Wow. That was a lot of fun, Miss Britt. And you know what I can't believe? What? That we're not wet. Spending this entire time underwater has been incredible, and we are not a drop wet. I don't know how we did it, but we did it. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining us, and we will see you next time. See ya. Bye, everybody. Thank you so much for being in the ocean with us today, and we'll see you next time. Thank you for joining us today on Medford Anywhere Learning TV for the latest updates on what's going on in the Medford School District, including COVID-19 updates, as well as next steps for Medford Anywhere Learning, because there's always more still to come. Check out our website at www.medford.k12.or.us. See you soon. So nice to meet you too, Dr. Champion, and yes, I have a couple of questions. This one's quite serious. All right. So, from 
one champion to another, who are you going to root for? Well, what are my options? South yeah. Medford Panthers, uh, North Tor uh, Tornadoes. Whatever team is representing Medford, I guarantee that's the team that I'm going to be rooting for, for sure. If you got to make a holiday, what would it be? Uh, make a holiday? I think I would go with Color Day. Late January, when it's real dark and cold outside, we have our holiday, which is Color Day. And on Color Day, everybody wears their bright colors, like your bright pink. All the cakes are, are multicolored cakes, and there's, there's, there's confetti and, and things going up in rainbows, and you name it, there's color everywhere. And we take the gray world and we make it colorful. How's that sound? Good. <laughs> it's pretty good. Thanks. Uh, what state are you from? I grew up and spent um, most of my life in Texas. I was born in a small town right in the center of Texas. I started teaching um, as an elementary at an elementary school in um, Houston, Texas. And I taught elementary theater arts for a number of years in the Austin area. Have you been on Pottermore before? Have I been on what? Pottermore. What is that? It's a Harry Potter app. Yes. So you can take quizzes on it and like, what's your Patronus and Yes. What's your house? What's your Patronus? Uh, it's a type of dog. Oh, I think it's a terrier. That's so awesome. I'm, I'm afraid I'd get on there and be like my Patronus would be like a chipmunk or something. I mean, I want something ferocious and, and incredible. I mean, I'm, I'm nervous to do this whole Potter, what's it called? Pottermore. 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 That's awesome. That, what house are you? What house are you? Hufflepuff. All right, Hufflepuff, that's awesome. I've always appreciated Hufflepuff. Other countries, such as Finland, they have technology classes, such as coding and computing. Do you think our school district could have the budget to implement those kinds of classes in schools? Great question. As a matter of fact, it's something that the Medford School District has prioritized over the last few years. We've got, uh, for example, the Chromebook rollout that's happened starting this year with ninth grade, um, which offers an opportunity for a tool for um, our students and teachers to be able to access technology very easily, literally in their hands. However, we know that coding is a, a skill that, that can grow and it's definitely something that we are considering looking toward for the future. The, uh, my son happens to be a computer programmer and so this is very near and dear to my heart as well so that's a great question. What is your favorite type of car? My favorite type of car is one that runs, that has an air conditioner and and that's pretty much it. I also like good gas mileage. Get me there, get me there safely, and have an air conditioner. What's the first change you want to propose as superintendent and why? One of the things that I, I believe, John, is that it's important that we that there's not this, this idea that I'm going to bring all this whole new set of ideas um, into the system, that actually what, what we need to do is together um, with teachers and with principals and with students and with all of us, the board coming together and saying, here's who we want, who, here's who we want to be, here's, who, here's where we want to go, and then let's talk about then how we get there. So this idea that I'm some sort of magician who has all the tricks to make all those things happen, that's not the way it works. What happens is we together have the best ideas together. And so one of the pieces that I want to bring is to make sure that we're doing that, that we're bringing the voices of teachers and students and principals, central office folks and the community together so that we can make some things, make some things better. Do you go to different schools or were you a teacher? Yeah, so I do go to go to different no, schools. No, like are, are you a sub or a teacher? Oh, got it. So I, uh, I am not a sub or a teacher right now. I do sometimes go into classrooms though. I love that and I love the opportunity to uh, hang out with students and do some teaching. I, I, I love it. And it makes me thrilled that for our teachers who do that every day because it's incredible. They do they do incredible hard work, wouldn't you say? Yes, this, yes they do. They, they do. They really do. They, I agree. I they agree. do really hard work every day to make sure their students are safe and healthy and not getting sick. And learning. And learning as well. And learning. I mean, all those things is what a great teacher does. And so getting the opportunity to go see the teachers do that is one of my favorite things to do, for sure. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's true.